The most important issue in any election for me will always be the economy. And that essentially encompasses jobs, taxes, businesses, and property rights. All of these issues are interconnected, and there is nothing more important. Take the issue of poverty, for example, which is not actually a problem at all in Canada, save for the imagination and complaints of bleeding hearts. But nonetheless, let us examine it. What is the solution to poverty? Better and more numerous jobs, of course. Or how about businesses shutting down? This destroys jobs, but why does it happen? For many reasons, but one important one is taxes. A business that is just marginally profitable, when faced with higher taxes, will shut down. Conversely, a business which is marginally unprofitable, when faced with lower taxes, will stay open. Taxes, jobs, business, business these are all interconnected issues, and together we have the issue of the economy. In many ways, our grandfathers understood these issues better than we do today. Most economists in this modern era are little but apologists for the state ready to explain away even the most idiotic government policy. For example, the issue of the minimum wage. The minimum wage is a price floor, and it is very well documented in the science of economics that price floors lead to surpluses. In the case of the minimum wage, we have a price floor on the price of labor, and this leads to a surplus of labor, which we call unemployment. London has very high rates of unemployment. Now, a good deal of this is because of the policies of Ottawa and Queen's Park, which I have been a vocal critic over the years, but we cannot ignore the effect that City Hall has on our local economy. The effect of City Hall on our economy is almost entirely negative. Businesses have been closing down in the downtown area. Now, as I hinted above, a large part of this is the boom-bust business cycle. We are in a recession, and in a recession, businesses close down. Still, each year, property taxes go up. When you look at at a business that is on the margin, then you examine the effects of property taxes. You see that property taxes directly close down businesses and kill jobs. The solution is simple. Cut property taxes, or even better, eliminate them, and watch our business community revive itself and watch good paying jobs be created. This is a principle that DeSico does not understand. We do not need committees to talk about revitalizing our downtown core. We do not need fake metal trees, the only use for which seems to be locking up one's bike. We need jobs. We need more small businesses. We need lower taxes. We need City Hall to leave us alone. As a man of leisure most of my life, I have a good deal of time, I've had a good deal of time to study the history of economic thought and to draw from the conclusions of men far wiser than myself the prescription to various social and political ills. The answer is freedom, economic freedom, a veritable panacea for social, political, and economic problems. The freedom to earn a living and the freedom to spend your money any way you see fit. The freedom to own and operate a business if you are able and willing. Property tax is actually a denial of economic freedom. It makes the statement that you do not in fact own the land you claim to own that it is the property of the state, and they demand from you rents for operating on their territory. I reject this notion, and I stand up in favor of economic freedom, in favor of the right to own property and against property taxes. If you wish to abolish the property tax, if you want City Hall to stop hindering the development of our local economy, then on October 25th, vote Zach Young for Mayor of London, Ontario.